let's go over it again. Okay, I had a heart to heart talk with morning when I was like, what is, what is going on? Do you know the grade you're getting in this class and the rest of your classes is influencing your future? Did you know that or not? I said, oh, I didn't know that. Morning Lab said, I have been on that. Morning Lab, oh, we didn't know that. I said, oh, I'm just kidding. You all know what I'm kidding. OK, so study smart. As I said in the book, we all, I, I'm one of them. I want to study less and party more. If that's not your case, you are not from this planet. That's what I say. Well, yeah, I mean, I like to read books. Yeah, that's different than studying organic chemistry, calculus, physics, biology. Maybe you like it. I don't know. Maybe a few of you are there. But most people don't. You know, most people, some people like just study biology. I don't want to deal with calculus or chemistry or math. I love biology. Right? You're looking at me. I didn't want to deal with chemistry. Oh, it was like pulling my teeth. Studying I, I enjoy taking biochemistry. Don't get me wrong. Physics was easy, nice, free for me. A lot of people had a hard time in physics. Calculus was, okay, I did okay. I passed one and two. I didn't go for the third one, so forget it. I'm going to change my major. I changed my major to biology. I thought I wanted to become an engineer because English was my second language. I couldn't handle all of the words in biology. But I took one biology class. I fell in love. So everybody said, you want to go to, but what are you going to do with a biology degree? I said, I don't care. I know I like it. I don't care what I want to do. You are talking about my sophomore year in college. My sophomore OK, but anyhow, uh, sleep keeps information in. If you are in the habit of not sleeping, do take pills. Uh, don't take any pills. <laughs> you must sleep in order to keep the study that you've done stays in. OK, uh, exercise. Some of you say, I don't have time for exercise. Okay. Then I don't. Exercise gets you a better grade. If you're a student athlete, you're exercising two, three, four hours a day, that might hurt your grades. Okay? You're looking at one. I ran track, and then after practice, I came home. I was in my dorm room. I was dead beat, tired. I didn't study. And on weekends, most weekends we were gone, traveling all over. So my grades of my undergraduate were not good. I was not slacking, but I just didn't have the energy to study. Okay? Eating, make sure you drink enough water, complex carbohydrates, raw fruits and vegetables, proteins and fats, caffeine in moderation. Some of you are drinking a lot of caffeine. It's not healthy. Just one cup a day. When you get up in the morning, is that right? Until noon, the days that you're off, you don't have much classes. That's the time your brain is short. You can study a lot. You can put, if you get up on Saturday morning or the days you don't have class, you can put two, three hours study time right here. During that time, go exercise, take a nap. It is healthy to take a nap only for half an hour to an hour. And then another you can put another two, three hours study time here and go to bed around 9, 10 p.m. On the days you're off, you don't have class, you don't have work, okay? So how are you supposed to study? Again, 50 minutes, 10 minutes break. On that 10 minutes, do not get into online. Do not get on your cell phone. Do not look for your cell phone. <laughs> Just lose it purposely. Use your cell phone. Get it on your laptop. Ten minutes? What am I? I mean, what am I supposed to do for ten minutes? Just relax. Just or pace a little bit. And listen to music and dance. I don't know. Do a stationary bike, treadmill, whatever you want to do for ten minutes. But do not get on cell phone. Why? I say that if you get on your cell phone or you check the internet, you lose your concentration for the next fifty minutes. Do that make sense? So, again, based on this chart, you can put three, three hours. I'm saying three hours. Talk, not more than three hours. After three hours, go run, go exercise, go uh, watch a movie for half an hour, an hour. Take a break for an hour or two. 
eight. You, when you're study, it takes a lot of ATP, a lot of energy. So go get something to eat. Relax for half an hour, an hour, and then come back with another three hours. I hope I'm making some sense. Whenever you come to the class, just like this, you take notes. I talked about sestos. You only have, you guys, you only have 24 hours to go back and read these notes. It is fresh in your mind. You read it. You fortify it with more information. It will stay here for a longer period of time. You forget it. You come back in 50 hours from now, 48 hours from now. Not everything I said is in your brain. I call it law of 24 hours. When I interview medical students or the people who wanted to go to medical school, I had my list of questions and I wrote their response. I will get to you when I think. I wrote their response and when I went home, within 24 hours, I rewrote my interview with I rewrote it. Yes, 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 on the table. I was going to sell it, but they said, no, don't sell it. <laughs> you need to buy a whole lunch. Yeah. Oh, 50 lunches? <laughs> yes, but like, 24 hours, that's all you have. Material. The so, one? So we should review this before we go to sleep tonight? Right. So if we go to sleep, you right. know. You, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> so we still, so we no, still you have, still have tomorrow. Time. You still have tomorrow until 1 o'clock. That's what the law of 24 hours is. No, if, if today you have to go back in this, then you have, yeah, no, you have 24 hours. Okay, so listen. Uh, work on quality, not quantity. Uh, study the most difficult subjects first. I talked about that. Change the subjects if you can. But tomorrow you have zoology exam. I know she has zoology and calculus. But anyhow, you want to study all of zoology. Yes, study zoology all three hours or six hours. That's fine. However, do not forget this. Today, you, today, tomorrow you have zoology exam. But today you also went to your chemistry and you went to history. You've got to go back and review those. Rewrite your chemistry notes, your history notes, half an hour, an hour, whatever it takes. Have to do it. We have to follow the 24 hour rule. Even though we have exam next day. Not much, just quickly. You know, fortify. Um, change the subjects if you can and manage your time. Here we go. Manage your time. How many hours in a week I'm going to high schools and they say, oh, 300, 500, 1,000? And I say, put in yourself. And some of them sit down and, okay, 24 times 7, uh, 168. Great, hallelujah, give that guy a Nobel Prize. <laughs> I came up with the number. 168 hours, guys, that's it, that's all. And then you have, why we say a week? Why do I say 24 hours? How many minutes in 24 hours? I say a week because you have repeated repetition. Is that right? Once you repeat it, the subject matters, the classes, everything, it's repeated again next week. Is that not right? You have class Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then next week you have the same class Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, zoology, and repeat it again next week. Tuesday, Thursday, so that's, that's why I say one week. Eight hours of sleep, four, five, or three hours of uh, eat. At the end, you don't have much time to socialize. You don't have much time to go to social media or online. I hope I'm making some sense. You don't have those types of things. Remember, you're investing for your future. You are saying no to a lot of things. If you have family, you're saying no to your family. If you have, you could be working somewhere in Wall Street and making zillions of dollars. You're saying no to that. You're coming in here listening to me and other professors. You're making an investment. Just coming to the class and listening to us presenting you with tapeworms does not cut. Put it this way. It does not cut. You have to go home and spend time with the material. If you are not doing that, I'm sorry to break the news to you. This is not high school. High school, you went to the class, that's it, you passed. Most of it. 
some people get offended. The high school I went, I had to work a lot. Yeah. My daughter is not this high school here, but she went to middle school. She just went and came back. No study at night. And now she's in high school, she's suffering. Um, it's a college high school. She's suffering, she has to study. Because they didn't prepare her in middle, uh, middle school. I don't think they prepared most of you for college. Now you're coming to college, ah, I have to know that stuff. I have to be able to spell it. You have to spell it and underline it. You have to be able to spell it and underline it. So some of these needs to be cut. Some of these needs to go. Memory, we talked about this, you have to organize, you have to make mnemonics for yourselves, write a summary, and then I give you the uh, memory palace, right? For, you, you know, the maximum is 10 to 12 words. 10 to 12 words for the memory palace. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a great test taker. I know one of your classmates in every quiz or exam right down on the dress. Great test taker. That's awesome. You should do that. You should look at the mirror and say, hey, I'm a doctor. Don't, don't get chip on your shoulders. I'm a doctor. Go treat people. You know, that's why I don't come to you with my leg. I have a problem with my leg. You know, I have a tournament on, uh, on, on this weekend. I have a tournament. And I don't know what to do. It hurts. But, you know, but anyhow, they, they, they say, I mean, are you coming back next week? I said, no, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. So, but anyhow, uh, how did they get that? Uh, oh, look at the mirror and say, I'm a great soccer player. I'm a great runner. I'm a great hurdle runner. But in your case, you should say, I'm a great student. Okay? That goes on top of uh, what you're supposed to study. Okay, multiple choice. I didn't talk about that. Distractors a little bit. Okay, so the system one thinking is when you guys take notes in the class, and you go home, you rewrite your notes, or you make flashcards. I should bring you guys my flashcards. You make flashcards. All of that is called system one. When you make flashcards, when you rewrite your notes, when you read your textbook and underline it, when you read your textbook and underline it, will they get you an A? No. You've got to go over those flashcards separate them to two piles. The one that you do remember, the one you don't remember. Go over your notes every night from beginning to the end. When you read your textbook, you underline it, you highlight it. You've got to go over those highlights. You thought it is important. He talked about it in lecture today, right? The textbook I'm talking about. So you've got to go over. You've got to go over. That's system two. When you keep going over the material, when you keep going over the material, that is system two. And then finally, during exam, critical thinking, when you know how cloning is happening, you know about cloning, and you know about stem cell, and the professor asks you to put them together, then, because you know system two, then during exam, you can put them together. I hope I'm making some sense. Some of you wrote down stem cells separately, and some of you uh, wrote down cloning separately. Yeah, you answered the question partially, but I wanted to get it. How do you put them together? Okay, so remember, uh, the rest of your life is going to be like that. Okay, you come to the class, you take notes today, right here. That's why I have it look like this. And there's a border on your notebook right here. Then you go home and you summarize and write, rewrite your notes and write down the key terms. Uh, uh, fasciola hepatica, uh, the palladium caninum, whatever terms knowledge you hear. And then you've got to remember whatever is about the palladium caninum is here and you wrote down the term here. Do I make sense? You're supposed to read your notes every night, from the beginning to the end. Right now, when you're reviewing your notes, the sponges and cnidarians, you should go over them. You should still read them tonight. Sponges and cnidarians, since you've been reading them for three weeks now, two weeks now, every night, it goes fast. You don't spend too much time on sponges and cnidarians tonight. Five minutes, ten minutes, that's it. 
when it gets to assess those two nights, that's when you're fortifying, you're going over the videos, you're reading the book, the lab manual, you're adding information, rewriting the notes. That should take bulk of your time to assess those. The rest of the time, tonight, when you're studying zoology, every night you're supposed to study zoology, every night you're supposed to study physics, every night you're supposed to study calculus, I'm not saying three, four, five hours, just one hour for each subject, minimum, okay? And then if some classes needs more time, then sure, spend more time that night. But you're gonna go over your zoology lecture notes today, 24 hours, assess those, and review everything from beginning until now. You have exam on Friday, make a, you have exam next week, Thursday. Right now you should make an inventory. What is in that exam? Are you going to study uh, uh, embryology? Are you going to study stem cell, cloning? I would not. Maybe you do. If you do, you're wasting your time because that's not in the exam. You've got to make an inventory. What is in the exam? Sponges, cnidarians. It starts from there and then it goes to platyhelminthes. Make an image and study. Keep studying every night. And then on, on, if you want to go to group study, maybe you should do it on Wednesday. And then if you don't know when you go to group study, leave immediately and go home and study. That's what happened to me. I went to group study, they were talking all night and I was lost. I thought maybe something, osmosis would happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. Osmosis it didn't happen. And I came next day from the exam. But anyhow, uh, final notes, getting ready, Thursday nights. If you have exam on Friday, Thursday night, relax. Don't stress, just, you know, enjoy your night. And then Friday, Amir, show me what you got. Or next Thursday, Amir, give me your best shot. That should be your attitude when you come to the exam. Uh, repetition, repetition, repetition makes what? Permanent. Repetition, repetition, and you guys are not doing that part, you're missing. You're looking at your notes, you're looking at these, and when in, in the lab, by the type of questions you ask, I know how much you spend. Marco goes, he's, wow. <laughs> the type of the questions you ask for me, I know how much, I mean, so I should not ask you any questions, no. You should ask me a question, any question you want. And I will answer. But by type of question they ask me, I know how much you spend. Mm -hmm. Meditation, don't forget it, guys. That's part of that's part of your routine. If you're student athletes, you should do it. Uh, in Olympics they did it. They asked the uh, they asked Olympians to picture it, how they are running their race, why they're meditating of your soccer players. They ask them, picture the game in your head. And they will have it. They call it muscle, you guys know muscle memory? Muscle memory, something like that. What kind of doctor, if you're gonna become a doctor for uh, money, don't go there, please. Your life will be miserable. We talked about this, right, at the beginning of semester. What are the things that allow you to take this class? We have a room, right? You have, if we have a, somebody here to talk to you, right? your family, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, say, okay, go to school. Oh, I love you to be at home, take care of me or whatever, but it's not go to school. Or you could work, above all, you could be working, making money, but you said no to all of that. Isn't that true? But you have to do it in 10 minutes. Okay, we have a few minutes. Here we go. It is, it is in Amazon, it's in the other college bookstore, and it's in Barnes and Nobles. But we have um, a few minutes if you guys want to ask any question about the material uh, that we said. No? No, review. The what? Yeah, that's the review right now. It's review. I'm the review right now. Yes, Ruben. Uh, what is, uh, excuse me, give me a second. Um, what are the main characteristics of radiate atoms? When you cut them, 
uh, when you cut them long uh, longitudinally in any direction, both counts are alike. Okay. That's it. Well, will you be able to answer questions in the lab or? Yes. Okay. I'm able to ask these questions anytime. All right. Not at night when I'm asleep. Okay. But any other time I'm available. Okay. Because I love my sleep. <laughs> yes. Um, I noticed Hymenolepis niana was covered in one of your charts. Um, right. Do you want to see your for that? Yeah, Hymenolepis niana is this very, very small tapeworm, just like Echinococcus granulosus. Uh, it does not harm human. It's really not much of it, anything. The same as uh, Tinea pisiformis. Uh, it does not harm us. Just I thought I don't mention it. I thought I mentioned only the tapeworms that they harm us. That's why. I didn't mention the other two. Her textbook mentioned it, the charts mentioned it. They do not harm us. Tinea saginata, I, I thought I might as well mention it because of Tinea sorium. The two, the two are related. All right. Uh, yes. So what are the, why is the life cycle of the play hel helminthes the way it is? Because, the, well, Remember the one that I was hoping that you would get out of it, that one egg becomes many larvae? Yeah. That's not true in case of uh, uh, cestodes. Yeah. It is true in case of trematodes, uh -huh. only trematodes. So one egg becomes many larvae, and those many larvae hopefully pray to find the right host and complete the life cycle. Okay. Because you know, in case of trematodes, they yeah. go through uh, snail. Yeah. They, and then from snail, they go through fish. Right. From fish, they find human. Right. That's just a couple of them. Some of them after fish, they go to go. Uh, no, after, some of them go through snail, and then they have to go to vegetation, and then find human. So it's a, it's a lot of steps. Right. In order to complete the life cycle, and that's why one egg becomes many larvae. I hope I answered that question. Yeah. For you. Yes. Anything else? Yes. What sure. are the four or more adaptation techniques that systems developed to be successful? Well, I don't know. Number one is they do not harm their host, do not harm host in general. In general. Okay. Not the larval stages can do that. Uh, absorb food uh, through uh, tegument. Okay. The third one would be uh, they have repeated units, repeated units, which is called progonids. Number four, uh, many, they, many, many, many eggs, many eggs they put out. You know, they, they're like an egg factory. If they, imagine, if they live, somebody going to do this uh, mathematical, those of you are math major. Somebody who's math major, they live inside of our gut for 10 years. That's it. Okay? And 10 years, how many proglottids they put out? And each proglottis has many, 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 many eggs in there. So eggs, many eggs in um, proglottis. Okay? What else? Uh, they have, um, do not, I said do not harm the host. Um, they have scolex attached to intestine. Right? Our intestine moves. At the beginning of semester, we talked about it. We have segmentation and uh, um, segmentation and what else? Oh, um, peristalsis, thank you. So our intestine moves. It can excrete the whole animal, but no, they cling on. What else? Any, yes, any, any more? Number six, there's more. That's what they are successful. They do not have a much of a, not much of, not much of, Intermediate host. Like snail, and from snail fish, and from fish, human. Just two, maybe pigs, human, and that's it. 
Yes, uh, what are the characteristics of the phylum Nigerians and what are the classes? The classes, um, the, you know, hydrozoa, scryphozoa, cubozoa, and anthozoa. Okay. The characteristics, they must have uh, nidocyte. Yeah. Inside of nidocytes is nematocyst. Yeah. They have tentacles. Some species have medusa and uh, polyp stage. Yeah. Some species have just medusa. Some yeah. species have just uh, uh, the colony. Yeah. Pretty much. I said it all. All right. Less than a minute. Samantha, what else? Uh, what are the different types of colonies and radiate animals? OK. Remember, I, uh, dactylozoi, dactylozoi, it is for defense colony. Okay, then you have gonozoi, which is your reproductive colony. And then you have gastrozoi, which is your uh, feeding colonies. What else? Yes? Can we go over the five differences between the hydra and the rest of the hydrozoans? What was it, you guys, that the hydra and the rest of hydrozoan? Uh, hydra is a uh, polyp stage only. Uh, polyp, they do move. Do move. They are in uh, fresh water. They are, uh, have both gonads in same species. The other ones are not like that. What is the fifth one? Solitary. They're solitary. Okay. Um, so in here you have the guinea part. Who? Which? The subclass? Who? Or, sorry. Who? Digenia? Yeah, the subclass for trematodes. Yeah. Um, are any of these not in Digenia? No. Yeah, we have a digenia, which all of the flukes are yeah. Yes, all of the flukes are digenia. And then we have monogenia. Monogenia is the other subclass which infects fishes. Remember that? Mm -hmm. They are ecto, they cause infestations in fishes. I love that. When I say fishes, I love it. Yeah, it feels so good. Because since I was a kid, I wrote them, you fishes are not plural. Oh, we never say fish. The term fishes do not exist. We only gave us one. It does exist. Yes, we only have so one, gen gen one genus of monogenia, and all the rest are phygenia. Right. Okay. All of, remember, but cestos is not, neither one of them. Right. Cesto is just a totally different class. It works. What are the different types of cells in the mesoglia layer? Um, I got rid of that slide because right now your textbook is uh, so that the only uh, well okay let me draw it. I I know and that was uh, can I erase this guys I won't erase this so what happens that that is an interesting question so in the past I asked for it and students um, argued with me if this is a mesoglial layer you remember portion of Pinacrocytes are here, right? Portion of pinacrocytes, these are pinacrocytes. And then you have the amoebocytes completely inside, right? Yeah. Completely. And then you have your quinocytes, again, partially. In here, All right. hopefully I will. These are quano um, sites. So if I had to draw an imaginary line of what is mesoglia layer, mesoglia layer would. Mesoglia layer is right here, portion of pinacrocytes is in here, and portion of quanocytes is in mesoglia layer. This is your uh, 
Am I good? Yeah. Um, mm. I'm listening. You go ahead and shoot. Uh, um, what is the difference between a polyp stage and the medusa stage? Polyp is stationary, or maybe sedentary medusa moves. Okay, is that it, or That's is it more? No, well, yes. The, uh, the medusa stage has a more of a gastrovascular cavity. Polyp yeah. stage does not have much of it. Since you go more to the left, would that be spongy? Right here would be spongy. Yes. So the amoeba sites are the same as the archaeo sites? Amoeba sites, archaeo sites, same thing. Or... What else? So what are the characteristics of cubozoa? Uh, Jocelyn, what is... What are the different types of cells in periphery? What is what? The different types of cells in periphery. That's it. I mentioned it here. Pinacocytes. Uh, amoebocyte, uh, there is one more, porosoite, poro, there is one more, uh, porosite. That's it. They are at the tip of the osculum, it depends on species or, uh, or uh, prosopite. The Cub cubozoa, they're cubic, they're cube like, they're very dangerous, most venomous animal on planet Earth. Cubozoa. Yes. The porosite is on the periphery, but not on the mesoglea layer. Well, portion you can say portion of it. Look, this many this portion of it is in mesoglea layer too. Okay. What else? Uh, what are uh, you already listed the four uh, adaptation techniques that cestodes developed to be successful? Those are it, right? All right. Um, what are the most devastating cestopods? Cestos. Yeah. Most devastating cestos. Today's lecture. Okay. Watch the video. What else? Do why uh, why does cla do class monogenia cause any problems to human? If not, explain why. We do not get. Yeah. Okay. We are not the right host. Fishes, fishes yeah. are the right host. All right. Easy loves it when I say fishes, fishes, and I'm being recorded. And I'm being broadcasted all over the world. Fishes, fishes. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what part should we focus on? Like, you know, you what? talk about the parasites and everything, should we focus on like, who's the host, like, what's like the disease and stuff? Like, uh, yes, you should know diseases for the essay portion of the exam. And then for the non-essay portion, for the multiple choice, I, I still know the diseases, and then I would emphasize on characteristics of the class, phylum, uh, you know, characteristics of the phylum or characteristics both class, phylum, everything. Uh, what is the name of the cell that covers sponges? And these type of things. Um, opinions, no. In case of platy uh, uh what is uh, are they radial symmetry, bilateral symmetry, pseudocilomate, or eosilomate? You see what I'm saying? Characteristics of the phylum. There's pseudosilomate, right? Huh? There's pseudosilomate, right? Lady Alimentis? No, they're acilomate. Oh. You're not studying your notes every night from beginning to the end, Drew. All right. You're bilateral. I am bilateral sandwich. Platy Alimentis are bilateral sandwich. When we left Cnidarians and Tenophora, Nidarians and Tenophora, we left them everything from the rest of semester except starfish. They're bilateral symmetry. Starfish, when we get to them, they are radial symmetry. Starfish, yes? For the lab purposes, yeah. Oh, yeah, we reviewed it in the lab today, right? I asked what class, what phylum. All of the spe all of the species, most of the species that was discussed in the lecture, we have them in the lab. Most. Of them. Yes. What are, uh, Roman. What are the characteristics of Gonionemus, Ophelia, and Physalia? What What is the characteristics of Gonionemus? Yeah, Ophelia and Physalia. Yeah, 
Well, well, I agree. It was just uh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 going there, do not worry about it too much. Just, yeah. just know what class it belongs to. It yeah. has hydrozoa, and it has a velum. Right. Right, belongs to hydrozoa. And then uh, you, um, uh, you have it in the lab. Yeah. For, Look at them and right. know what is the name of the genes going right. to Okay. Small, medium, Yes. Um, for the if you guys have a class next, go ahead. Uh, I guess it seems like it, these guys do not have a class. Yes. What is what? The Plexi helmets. They are all in the health plane right now, right? Yeah, they are in uh, a great uh, tissue, cell tissue. Uh, that's very great, and they're great. Uh, uh, poly, what is that? Uh, class, look at the puzzle. Here's your link for your video. Not class. Um, one big class. Where are you? It's done? Uh, yes, it's done. Uh,